Nowadays, personal branding is everything. Now it's all about how much people know you, how you have placed yourself in the industry map, and if your personal branding is apt for that community, your business will be successful. Credibility, the trust. Credibility. It builds up credibility. It builds up trust. People start believing in you, right? And that's when they come to you. She's a multi-talented entrepreneur and an award-winning international blogger, focusing on people, luxury, entertainment, and lifestyle. Fashion. Hmm. It's an extremely fast-paced industry. Yeah. How do you keep up with it? So now what happens is... So welcome back, Alphas, to a new episode of the Alpha Talks podcast. Today, we have a very special guest joining us. She's a multi-talented entrepreneur and an award-winning international blogger focusing on people, luxury, entertainment, and lifestyle. She's a founder of Lux Presso Magazine, an international digital magazine with over 15 years of experience in luxury fashion and amazing collaboration with amazing brands. Her authentic style and deep industry knowledge have provided her with a huge global following. She continues to inspire entrepreneurs and influencers with her creativity, innovation, and commitment to empower others through her engaging and influential online presence. Welcome, Deputy. Great having you with us today in the Alpha Talks podcast. Thank you so much. Uh, it's my pleasure. Same here, same here. We're all uh, waiting to get the, I would say, wisdom and knowledge bombs from your side. I hope I can do that. <laughs> let, give me, let me give you a little bit about Debti. She's a yoga practitioner, an award-winning blogger. She's a founder of Lux Presso magazine. She's one of the pioneers in social media. She started in 2012. She's ha she has over 15 years of work experience in luxury fashion, and she worked with amazing brands like DNG, Gucci, Bulgari, Samsung, Amazon, and a lot more. So welcome to the Alpha Talks podcast. It's Thank a pleasure you. having you today. So let's start with the early days of Depti. Sure. The early days. You started in 2012 with Jive with Depti. Mm. What inspired you to start? Uh, so actually in 2012, I started mainly with Facebook and a blog, mm -hmm. like a proper writing blog. Mm -hmm. I used to write long blogs because that time people were still reading a lot online. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, print was there, but blogging was something very new and people were finding it really interesting. So uh, in 2012, uh, after my son was born, mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, capture travel with him. That was mm -hmm. the idea, to be honest. Moment. Yeah, the, that was like, okay, I thought, you know, why not start with something like that and capture my journey so that I can, you know, help some uh, new mothers. Mm -hmm. So that's how it started, honestly. But that lasted for three months because I started getting really Really good feedback from brands across the industry mm -hmm. from lifestyle fashion travel food everything and then i thought you know let's not just do the baby stuff uh -huh. let's do uh, more lifestyle <laughs> more business so uh that's how i changed uh, the whole approach uh, but yeah, if you ask me inspiration, I think that was the inspiration mm -hmm. that time. Also, it was a new field. There were very few people who were doing this. In fact, I was uh, in 2013 itself, I won the best Asian uh, blogger award in the UAE yeah. because it was relatively a new field. And but a question here. Yes. A lot of people who, who wants to start, yeah. they feel afraid. What I'm going to post, what people will think about me. You, you know, didn't have this? Uh, so, no, honestly, when I was starting, I thought, let's see. Mm -hmm. You know, I just started without a, a very long vision that right now we are sitting in 2023. And I didn't think of 2023. Yeah, you true. know, I started as uh, it was fun. It was entertaining. I was enjoying the whole process. And I thought, okay, let's start and see where it with where it takes me, you know? Mm -hmm. So I didn't give a timeline to it. I didn't think about, or oh, what next, you know? But it kept happening. And That's sometimes, the best part. Yeah, and sometimes I think we think a lot about doing things. Uh, when it comes to business, we are making Excel sheets and business presentations plans, and all of six that. Months, yeah. And then suddenly one day it's like, you know, this is the time to just start it. And you start. Absolutely. You know, you don't really think about what's happening around. So overthinking 
it's a way to make us paralyzed. That's I, what I believe. I, I believe, yeah. Overthinking can also kill ideas, mm-hmm. right? Even you can be really creative at some point, but because of your overthinking and, you know, contemplating what next, what not, you kind of kill the idea because Absolutely. the charm is gone. You, you know, know? You, you said a piece of nugget now, I would say. You said like, I tried for a couple of months yeah. and then when I saw something, I tried to move in a different direction a little Absolutely. bit. And that's in business what we call pivoting. Absolutely. Absolutely. You start something and you see the result. Yeah. So you pivot. You have to be flexible. Absolutely. Okay. Now it's 2023. Hmm. You started 2012. Yeah. The challenges, I believe, hmm. in 2012 is completely different than the challenges in Absolutely. 2023. What was the challenges at 2012? 2012, I would say it was a new field. Mm. People didn't know what blogging is so much. They were still getting uh, getting to know about it. Uh, Instagram was fairly new. It launched towards uh, it launched in 2012, mm-hmm. and you know, Facebook was one of the mediums which was very popular that time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel the challenge there was how do you tell people that you are here on the social platform and they should come see what you're doing or they should, you know, get onto this platform. It was hard. And I believe also one thing is like now when we talk about like Instagram, Facebook and stuff, we're professionals in this. So we talk about like, how can we beat the algorithm? How can, I think at 2012, there was nothing called algorithm. Not at all. Not at all. There was no business account. There were no (laughs) algorithms. There were no videos, you know, it was more about picture content. It was about nice looking pictures that would go on your profile. And then of course you write a story with it, but it was video content was not that popular Mm -hmm. in 2012. Now it's all about videos. Video. Now it's about how you can catch, uh, you attention, know, the, the attention, the hook. The hook. It's it's now very different. I think there was a, there was no concept of podcast. Mm, podcast was true. not even. Exist. I don't think so. It, it exists. Yeah, true. exactly. So now it's about how creative you can be. How. Um, quick you are, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, where you are able to catch the trend, mm-hmm. not miss out on what's happening. So now you have to be more proactive. Before that was not the case. Okay, you were creating content twice a week. Mm-hmm. Now it's about twice every, a day. Yeah, twice <laughs> or thrice a day. And you know, you t- like today morning, I've done four things, yeah. you know, four different pieces mm-hmm. of content for brands. And now we're meeting for this thing. And then I had my own thing. So it's always about, so it's more stressful now. It is. Of it's course. More it's, I mean, see when you enjoy, you don't feel the stress yeah. because you just, uh, kind of go on an autopilot mode, you know, True. this to that. This, that, that. Yeah. But, but you need to really find time for yourself in between all this chaos, mm-hmm. which is very important. True. So to kind of maintain that balance. And I think I still try to maintain that balance. So I'm not somebody who is posting stories the whole day about my life. Mm-hmm. I don't do that. I have just like, you choose some, what you post. Yeah, and, and also not regularly, you know, I'll post in the morning a little bit and maybe you know, a couple in the uh, afternoon and then in the evening, but I'm not on uh, Instagram the whole day, which yeah. I, I mean, most of the people are there the whole day and Every there moment. is no break. Right. True. And I think it's very good for our mental health. If Absolutely. we can take that break, you know, sometimes when you go off the grid yeah. or over or, uh, from social media, yeah, you feel better. Mm. So that's some, sometimes I say to my people is like, Okay, I'm off on Sunday. Yeah. I don't want to be online. I don't want to touch my phone. I don't, I just want my mental health. I'm and mostly absolute... off on Sundays. It's not just sometimes I'm mostly off on Sundays. Uh, mostly off. Done. Yeah. You yeah. completed. Very good. Yeah. Okay, let's move. You are an influencer. Yes. You are an entrepreneur. I want you to tell me a little bit how personal branding hmm. is very important these days. Nowadays, personal branding is everything whether you are running a business or you are an influencer or, you know, you might be doing a family business for that matter. Mm -hmm. But now it's all about how much people know you, who you are, how you have placed yourself in the industry map and uh, communities. I think communities play a very important role. So if you've created your own community and if you're 
personal branding is apt for that community, your business will be successful. Credibility, the trust. Credibility. It builds up credibility. It mm. builds up trust. People start believing in you, right? And that's when they come to you. So, they say people connect more with people rather than a company. Absolutely. That's it's always about connection. So if you're running a business, it's not because of your name, the Alpha true. Talks is because of you true. and the people who work with you. So that's always, it's always the people Absolutely. that makes a difference. So that's why we believe these days, one of them, as we talk to everyone, like try to build your personal brand, sure. but you have to build something that people will resonate with the story being authentic. So personal brand is extremely important. Yeah. Be authentic, be yourself and be true. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if you're telling your true story, people appreciate that Absolutely. And, and they connect with you. They, they can put themselves in that situation, that moment, that person, and they connect and but there's an instant connection there. Absolutely. If people now are listening to us and they said, okay, I want to start building my personal brand, give them two things to do. First of all, identify what are your key strengths? Like what mm -hmm. do you believe you are? Whom? You know, you need to know what you stand for. True. If you know what you stand for, that's when you can take the next step mm -hmm. about building your branding and reaching out to people, building credibility, mm -hmm. building a profile. That would be an amazing profile, right? True. So I think the first and foremost, identify what you like, what are your strengths, and don't identify just the in industry trends. Of mm -hmm. course, that is important. But what role can you play in that in trend? That part. True. You know, mm -hmm. I think once you identify that. It's 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 a journey on it's itself. It's an amazing journey, yeah, to be honest. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look at you. You're doing so many things. You run amazing. businesses. You have podcasts. You have lived in so many countries. You know, it's it's amazing. True. And I think we all learn from that experience of life, right? When we are moving cities, when we're moving countries. Ooh, it's an amazing part. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, I have to confess that the personal brand or building my personal brand helped me a lot in business as well. Because it is people now make business with safe Absolutely. who they know before even they meet. So it's especially the world is now you know so unsafe when it comes to spams true. and so many people promising so many Absolutely. things. Businesses. It's a very good point. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's when credibility uh, comes into picture, personal branding comes mm -hmm. into picture, where you are already somebody. True. You know? Since we both have magazines. Yes. Tell me a little bit about your magazine and what inspired you to create it actually. So I'll be very honest. Uh, I started it in uh, during COVID time. Mm. I was at home. Most of the things were not really functioning that time. I was working from home. It was work from home kind of scenario. Mm. And uh, with my experience in uh, the fashion uh, category of business where I've worked with Altair Group in Dubai for over nine years where I was managing media for brands like Harvey Nichols. I did the launch of Bloomingdale's Dubai and Kuwait from the media mm. perspective. And then I worked with Gucci, Dolce, Armani, so many brands. So I always had the luxury background. Mm. And uh, then in India, I worked with LVMH Group. I looked after their Indian uh, media spans for mm. LVMH. And I thought, you know what, I already understand luxury well. I have the connection. Mm -hmm. I want to create something which would be worthwhile digitally. Mm -hmm. And that's where the idea of Luxpresso came into my mind. And honestly, I was not sitting with it. It was like today it came, you know, the, the, the idea, idea just came. popped up. And the, tomorrow I was talking to the website guys. And I think week after I was all ready with my plan of action mm -hmm. within a one month period. I just launched it. Did it matter it would succeed or not? Because not really. Not really. No. Right? So I, I think I'm a person mm -hmm. who uh, likes to, if I believe in my idea, I just start. Mm -hmm. You know, like I was telling you, I'm working on a new business proposition right now, True. but I haven't done, of course, I've done the basic homework. Okay. But I like the idea. I believe in it. And I feel with my uh, kind of credibility, I can run it uh, well and I just started. So right now I'm working on that. But it's it's always about, like I said, True. don't sit with it. You know, just I, I have a philosophy yeah. that I call it what you call it, a mad scientist. Yeah. The, day, uh, the year has 365 days. Hmm. I love being a mad scientist means I'm doing experiments hmm. 365 days. Wow. And what I mean by this, you said that you had an idea, tomorrow you actioned it. 
Sometimes we say, okay, I have an idea and mm. tomorrow I'm going to action it. It succeeds or not. It's something I'm not worrying about. Sure. Even if it didn't take off now, yeah. I will take it, put it in the drawer. The time will come. This file will come out and you have another project. See, if you have, if you don't have a huge investment to do, True. and I think most of us have some ability or some cool to concepts or too. something new to do. And if it doesn't require a huge investment, why not start it? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, of course, consistency is the king. We know that yes. it's very important to be consistent. And sometimes you fail to do that because you're doing multiple things Absolutely. and you're not able to be consistent everywhere on Instagram, mm -hmm. on digital, on your website, in business. True. That, so that is the hard part. Mm -hmm. You can launch it. Now, after that, what is important is how you can be consistent, how you can maintain the quality of what you were doing or what you thought of and how you can take it further. Mm -hmm. So I think these are the important key points which you need to think of when you're starting something. True. Okay, we are in a very competitive, I would say, environment yeah. by even being an influencer. What sets you apart? Like I said, mm -hmm. uh, personal branding and credibility and being honest. So most of the people, they are following you because they connect somewhere, mm -hmm. right? And if you're true to your story, if you're... You're, so, of course, you know, sometimes it happens mm -hmm. that you don't believe in a certain brand or you don't believe in a certain thing and somebody comes to you and say, can you post about it? True. But I try not to really do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, even it could be a paid thing, but then if I feel that it's not going to benefit my audience, if I'm not going to, I'm not convinced myself, mm -hmm. then how am I going to sell it or tell people about it? I will not be able to do, you know, have a right story about True. it. And I think that's what, uh, you know, when people know that, okay, you are not somebody who's just going to, if you don't believe in aesthetics and if you are going to be talking about it, of course, they're just going to go away from you because they know you're mm -hmm. into yoga, you're into Absolutely meditation true. you believe in skincare at a homely level <laughs> and if you're promoting aesthetics it's not something uh, that goes with your profile so i think it's important to stay true, true to yourself true and uh, just uh, go on that journey this is an extreme again hmm. competitive environment do you yes. worry about competition Huh, of course, uh, I mean, I don't worry about competition, but I cannot deny there's a huge competition and you have to be relevant. Mm -hmm. If you're not relevant, you will be out of the market the second day, right? Mm, true. So it's important to be relevant. You don't have to follow everything that your competitor is doing, but you create your own niche. Mm -hmm. You create the way you want to do things, mm -hmm. right? And it happens so many times people come to, oh, this one is doing that, you know, you should also try and cover this up. I'm like, yeah, it's a great idea, but mm -hmm. I don't think so I'll be able to do it, but I'll do what I'm doing in a different way. Yeah. It gives you a little bit of perspective, a different yeah. perspective. It gives you a push for sure True. because you have to be there. If you're not there, then of course, you know, people are just going to forget about you. Absolutely. It's, That's it's, what I love also about Dubai. Yeah. Dubai, okay, we say the whole, like the idea of being an influencer and so on across the globe. Yeah. It's extremely competitive. Sure. But I do believe in Dubai, the, um, the field is different. Yeah. It's much more competitive. Absolutely. And be, being in a market or being in a field that is competitive, it gives you a push rather than makes people worry it's an extremely competitive absolutely you know before coming to dubai yeah. a lot of people told me safe what the hell are you doing yeah. you're coming to an extremely competitive marketplace yeah. why why you're coming guys it gives you a push yeah. if you want to be the best you have to play with the best and look at this absolutely. you're doing so well absolutely you would have not thought of it when you were sitting back home absolutely so that's why i'm saying like don't ever fear from competition yeah just do your thing and the competition gives you a perspective, gives you a push. Absolutely. Totally, totally agree. See, you can, uh, like you said, you can pivot. True. You know, with competition also gives you that advantage where you think of new ideas. True. I never thought I'm going to do a podcast. See? I have to confess. Yeah. I never thought that. Yeah. yeah. But it delivers my message. It impacts people. So it sure. comes into the whole what you call my vision, my mission, hmm. it comes into it. Yeah, the same way I felt I'm very good in my comfort zone and I would post when I would post. But no, when it comes to competition, when you see that, oh, there's a lot happening, okay, don't go seven days uh, of, uh, you know, don't do seven days of shoots, but maybe do two or three days. Absolutely. So it gives that's you a push. the push, yeah. 
fashion. Hmm. It's an extremely fast paced industry. Yeah. How do you keep up with it? You have to keep up at the pace, you know. How uh, do you? Uh, Being like updated always with the industry uh, information, see, news and so on. How do you keep the pace? So now what happens is when it comes to news or getting updates, you, you get it easily mm. through social media. It's such a easy thing to know what's happening in the industry. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I mean, in my case, when I find something interesting is launched or there's some new concept that is launched when it comes to fashion or there are fashion weeks happening mm -hmm. around the world, I kind of uh, go a little bit into the depth of it and mm -hmm. follow it if I find it interesting. True. But if I find something is not really, you know, appealing to me and it's not going to appeal to my audience, then I just, you know, chuck it. Mm -hmm. So I, I think... Uh, it's also, uh, if you're passionate, True. you know, I was looking passion, for this. yeah, the passion is something that really, uh, you know, gives you a push to go deep down and, uh, learn a little bit more about something. So I think it's just like, you have to keep up with that. And if you're passionate about mm -hmm. something, no matter where you are, what you're doing, you'll keep up with the pace. It doesn't stress you because you know, like fashion yeah. has seasons. Hmm. It's not like, for example, let's talk about electronics. Sure. Electronics, Apple launches a phone every year. Yeah. So there is no stress. Yeah. In fashion, the fast pace. Yeah. If you don't have the passion, yeah. I believe you stress out, you burn out. And no, see, see, in fashion also now, when it comes to luxury brands, they do mostly two seasons, which is spring, summer, and autumn, winter. Mm -hmm. But then there are a lot of new launches that are happening in between. True. You know, a tie up with a designer or a launch in a different country. So there are a lot of things that are happening mm -hmm. in between. Right. And I, I think it's about like, like you said, you know, uh, if you are passionate, you're going to find a way to get to that. Absolutely. And so, it gives you the perseverance, the persistence yes, to keeping the pace. Yeah. Okay. What does entrepreneurship means to you or being an entrepreneur? Just what is it? it? If I have to define oh. it, I, I think I will not define it. Mm -hmm. I would say, uh, to me, if mm -hmm. personally, it means freedom, mm -hmm. freedom of thoughts, freedom of time, and also freedom of creativity. Mm -hmm. And this an entrepreneur can bring it on the table. True. Right. Uh, when you don't have to be put in a box in an office, you know, or don't have to be locked yourself, you know, sit in a cabin for say a month to just figure out what things are and you know how things are happening. I think you go beyond that. And you work on different ideas and become a free person. True. And I, I think freedom is the best part about being an entrepreneur. However, you have to work more than that office job. So 100%. The best job is maybe 12 hours or 10 hours mm -hmm. or whatever. As an entrepreneur, you're working 24 by 7. Because Even in your sleep. Yeah, you're thinking literally. About you are thinking about ideas to do next day or you're connecting with your team you're dropping in messages True. so it's 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 hard work i'm not saying it's not hard mm. but it's it's um it's what do you say uh, the right thing. word it's like a true thing you connect your with thing. it you feel good about it you enjoy doing it so your life becomes a little more lighter you know you, you know, feel fulfilled uh this the fulfillment of yeah, course fulfillment. and leaving something that not majority of people can have it. Exactly. Like ha turning an idea into a reality, that's not a lot of people can See, do See, most that. of us want to be in a job because we feel that it's secure. Now, once you break that, you know, that it's, you can be secure by yourself, mm -hmm. right? That's when the true entrepreneurship comes, you into know, action. into action. You know, I have a very nice analogy. Say like, entrepreneurship is like, Let's put it in that way. You're jumping off the cliff. Yeah. And on your way down, you start assembling the plane. So either you yeah. assemble the plane and survive or you... That's a great way to crash. It. And that's entrepreneurship. A lot of risks. Yeah. But at the end, it's also a lot of rewards. Mm -hmm. One of them is the fulfillment that you mm -hmm. said. Tell me the importance of having a team. Like when you're running your magazine. How team is important in entrepreneurship and running your business? Of course, team plays uh, one of the most important role and they have to gel with your business, right? And um, you, no one can run a business successfully alone. Mm -hmm, you true. need to have the like-minded people, people from different fields who bring in different experience, life experiences mm -hmm, we are talking here, true. right? Uh, so building a team is very important. And I feel uh, bringing in creative people, is 
really the best thing, especially mm-hmm. in our kind, uh, our kind of business, mm-hmm. wherein uh, they come with a completely different thought, which you cannot even imagine or think of. True. So any business or any product for that matter has to have, it comes with, along with people, right? It's the people who Do make you micromanage or not? Not really. Mm-hmm. I'm not a micromanager at all. From the um, beginning. Like yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I remember from 2008 when I started with Altair mm. and uh, there were couple, two coordinators who used to work with me and I used to just tell them, okay, this is the work. And But um, they're like, oh, but you don't follow up because I'm like, I'm like, I believe in you. Mm-hmm. you know? You'll deliver. The, give me the results at the yeah, end. Yeah, so I, I think, uh, you know, also micromanagement makes others a little uncomfortable uh they don't really enjoy working in that kind of space mm-hmm. so i would say yes guide them uh take them through the process things learnings everything but then let them be mm-hmm. you know there's a statement that says it's better to hire for an attitudes and values yeah backed by skills rather than just looking at a cv mm-hmm. and okay the skills are good because having the skills, I can teach skills, but I I can never teach an attitude. So you totally have this aligned with your team. Absolutely. So you hire for the attitude. I like to see people smiling in my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you can't teach people to smile. Yeah. You understand? So that's one of the things. Absolutely. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is about risks. Hmm. Tell me a risk that you've taken Hmm. in your business. Hmm. And when you took it, it was very hard to take it. And then when you took it, it turned out very good. It paid off. Hmm. So, uh, quitting a regular job mm-hmm. to start something is itself a risk. Absolutely. Because you are starting from scratch. You don't know how it's going to go. You haven't thought through the five years. Mm-hmm. You've thought through maybe six months or maybe a year, mm-hmm. but not a five-year plan in place. So, um, in case of uh, Luxpresso, mm-hmm. of course, I wouldn't say it was a big risk because when it comes to services... It's not a big risk. Mm -hmm. When it comes to product, that's where the big risk is. Luckily, I haven't launched a physical product. Mm -hmm. And physical product is something that I've always uh, refrained from launching Mm -hmm. for one of these things where, you know, long-term commitment. Inventory, inventory, warehouse. control, And, uh, you know, logistics, Mm -hmm. all of that. I never wanted to get into that space, Mm -hmm. to be honest. But I wanted more into the service space. So my risk was not very high, I would say. If you ask me personally, my risk was like, it was a 30% risk. Mm -hmm. Where, okay, if it doesn't work out, fine, maybe you'll go back to a job Mm -hmm. or maybe you'll do something else. So my risk was about time Mm -hmm. and about the regular commitments that you have in life as a single parent, especially where you know you have these bills to pay. So I I think, uh, but it was not a very hard space because you always had the option to go back. Mm-hmm. if you wish to right? uh-huh. I mean I, I think everyone has the option to go back absolutely but once you start uh, you're something of your own and once you start being an entrepreneur it's very hard to go back mm-hmm. after that if somebody tells 100%. you yeah it's very hard when I left Samsung mm-hmm. and I start my kind of own business with re- regardless mm-hmm. what Samsung was giving yeah. me a safe uh it was very hard to go back to corporate. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Regardless, all the challenges, the obstacles, the yeah. downsides, whatever you faced, I can't go back to corporate. Yes, yeah, same here. I don't think so. I can go back to corporate mm-hmm. now until it's like something really dreamy. Mm, true, true, true. <laughs> um, unless it's something out of the blue, true. Yeah, yeah. But it's a hard, it's a totally different it's life hard, style. style. Yeah. Moving with your own pace. Yeah. Uh, you are the, you're, have your own decisions. Yeah. It's an absolutely an amazing area. Mm. But again, I do believe not everybody is born to be an entrepreneur. Absolutely, yeah. So... But probably if I have to run a business where I'm the key decision mm-hmm. maker, then okay, maybe. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> totally agree. Okay. We were talking before going live. Yeah. We were talking about networks and relationships. Yes. How it's important, networks and relationships that contribute to your success mm. and what kind of advice or tips mm. you can tell people what they can do to make better networking and relationships from your point of view. So right now, how we are connected is network. Absolutely. Right? Somebody reached out to me from your team and 
uh, now we are connected and from here on maybe because of our connection we'll do other things True. tomorrow Absolutely. right so it's it's a connection which you can you can all see right now right mm. here right um so networking is of course important uh, in terms of firstly you need to identify one network which is industry network mm-hmm. correct so the industry that you come from have a network there now whether it's uh, you know magazines influencers mm-hmm. or maybe you are in a completely different field of it mm-hmm. i think have one industry network uh, and be regular there see what's new happening uh, see how you can contribute to something big mm-hmm. you know in that particular space it's a very nice one because i i see a lot of people just going around meeting people no there is no goal behind yeah. and there is no industry specific so yeah. just like meeting people for the sake of meeting people yeah and that doesn't mm-hmm. last even i've gone to a couple True. of events like that you okay probably you will have a good night True. that day and then it's finished and that's Absolutely, it you done. never really reconnect you know so i think if it's industry focus it's your interest for because that's where you will uh you know make use of it so maybe you are completely you are from a real estate business mm-hmm. but you have a keen interest in art true and then yeah. if you're going to an art exhibition or art collectives or a you know a jewelry exhibition i think it makes sense true. because you are interested in art and mm-hmm. jewels and watches you true. know or maybe you're going for a for an event uh, to Christie's yeah. if you if you're a watch collector okay it makes sense but if you're completely from a different field no idea just about watch the day and it's finished yeah you'll just uh, you know meet a few people and that's it you don't connect right so i think industry focus is really important and then second could be new learnings so i would like mm-hmm. to network sometimes uh, when i'm going to learn something new maybe mm-hmm. something that i i have to run a business as an entrepreneur and i don't understand maybe the financial side of business and there is a cool uh, seminar or an event which talks about, about the, the yeah, about the financial mm-hmm. side and maybe you know i would want mm-hmm. to go there because i know i'm going to add some value to my knowledge mm-hmm. so i don't network just for fun it's a sake of me absolutely true <laughs> you know? and you know that we say like your your network is your net worth yeah. and the more hands you shake the more money you make. So Absolutely. networking is extremely important. And also I'm a strong believer that there is nothing called a self-made whoever. No, never. You need to have people around you that support you and you support them as well. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the network of friends, family, industry. They all come together when you're launching something. It's, it's the truth. You know, they are there for you. Absolutely. We are in Dubai. Yeah. It's a fast paced city. Yeah. Yeah. You're in fashion. Hmm. It's a fast-paced industry. Hmm. And you're a single parent. How do you manage all these? How do you balance? Okay. The concept of work-life balance, does it come to you or not? Because I'm not a strong believer in a work-life balance. Yeah. So what's your point on that? No, so as an entrepreneur, I think uh, work-life balance doesn't come in easy. Uh, but I have... kind of managed mm-hmm. yeah luckily i've yeah. been uh, successful in managing that because i have my priorities right mm-hmm. true uh, so of course if i'm giving x amount of time to my business i'm going to give x amount of time to my son mm-hmm. and you know being a single parent it's your whole responsibility that you're looking after everything that's going on in the house true. right so it is definitely important as a single parent to have that balance you cannot be just mm-hmm. doing work or just travel you have to figure it out you have to find a mid ground mm-hmm. and sometimes i think in life it's important to find mid ground you know you would want to be ex- go extreme mm-hmm. but uh, that mid ground balance is what really plays uh, well in your life and depends on priorities think, as well yeah True. priorities and uh, also i i think uh, when i got into yoga and meditation uh-huh. it really helps me to maintain that balance because uh it gives you a perspective that life is not just about working running after money and uh, the pleasures of life what mm-hmm. we call right true but it's also about spending that time with yourself you know enjoying a moment of peace mm-hmm. uh, because you know at the end of it uh even less is more yeah true absolutely You know? you know like i'm i'm not going to say that i'm a fan or I'm not a fan of meditation mm-hmm. but i do practice meditation in a very strange way mm-hmm. just for the sake of to be able to have what we call it active listening okay so 
I don't listen to something. I, I just, you know, I, I stare to the wall mm. and I just keep staring and I just put one thought in my mind, just not to have many thoughts for the sake of meditation. And whenever any other thought comes to me, mm. I just label it, put it on the side and I say to myself, I'm going to handle it later. Mm. And this will help me when I'm with people to be able to really active listen rather than try to respond to their thing. Sure. What about meditation for you? For me, mm-hmm. meditation is just being in the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I say being in the moment, when I actually sit and meditate, or it's it's not about that you have to close everything mm-hmm. and sit in a corner to meditate. You can meditate anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's about listening to silence mm-hmm. within the whole chaos that's going on. Unbelievable. That true. is meditation. Mm-hmm. You know, Correct. you could be sitting here and you can connect with that thought of silence. And I think it's it comes with... Uh, time it comes with practice but once you achieve that that's a true meditation mm-hmm. and also i feel meditation could be for people it could be just doing good things mm-hmm. it could be smile true. it could be helping people mm-hmm. you know people meditation need not to be sitting in a quiet place always yeah. that's the wrong concept i of believe meditation. so as well true. I would say, or maybe that's a great concept mm-hmm. for some people for me it's now not the case mm-hmm. Of course, I love those silent moments and I love enjoying the breeze, Mm -hmm. sitting by the beach and all of that and love to meditate. But at the same time, I try to find my peace in the chaos. True. Agree with that. This is called the Alpha Talks podcast. And it's like a business mindset, entrepreneurship focused show. What does Alpha mean to you? Alpha could be anything to infinity, right? Mm-hmm. It's, what, what does it mean? Like it comes from, because you know, like a lot of yeah. people say alpha is like about masculinity, blah, blah, blah. I don't believe it that. Is, it, that's the literal meaning. Exactly. But I would say bringing the best in yourself could be an alpha. Mm-hmm. Bringing the best uh, in life could be an alpha. Mm-hmm. And uh, trying to break, uh, you know, break that secure net around you mm-hmm. and going out of it, True. like going for skydive, mm-hmm. could be alpha. A nice approach. A nice thing. Okay. What can be your advice to, I would say, like aspiring entrepreneurs or even influencers who are coming up now mm-hmm. who want to enter the, the luxury fashion yeah. sphere? What kind of advice would you give them now? Uh, sure. So I would say if they are just starting, mm-hmm. you know, uh, stay, stay close to your niche. Mm-hmm. So when I say stay close to your niche, like don't try to do everything because it's practically not possible to do everything. So if you want, if you know you want to do luxury fashion, then just stick to that. Work around uh, different themes within luxury fashion. Uh, find out which are the best events that are happening across the world right now. Mm-hmm. What are the trends that that are on? Uh, What is it that you would like to, you know, who are the people whom you would like to go and talk? Mm -hmm. Approach those people. uh, Prepare uh, like a nice uh, Excel sheet. I love Excel. (laughs) And and put down all your thoughts. Okay, this is what I can do. You know, I, I need to check out all the fashion weeks. I need to go meet 10 people. I need to uh, go and discover trends. I think just uh, start with something as simple as that, Mm -hmm. you know, make a nice document, put down your thoughts, because once you have your thoughts written, it's easier to kind of execute it. And it's a very competitive field. Like we know that it's not an easy field. There are thousands and thousands of people who are doing this. Are you really passionate about it? If you're passionate about it, if you can follow it. If you're just going to quit after one week, then probably, you know, it's not something something that you would want to start because social media, when it comes to influencing, content creation, digital media, it's all about being out there. So I think be ready for that. Mm -hmm. I love that. (laughs) Let's, do you like reading? A little bit. Do you have a favorite book? Uh, I would say The Secret. Oosh. That's Ooh. one of my favorite book, and it was uh, quite uh, quite an interesting True. read. It was one of those early books which I read. Absolutely. Yeah, and I read a lot of book by Wendar. He 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 writes amazing mm. stuff. And other than that, I do re- listen to a lot of podcasts. podcasts. Yeah, mm. a lot of podcasts which are to do with entrepreneurship and 
life in mm. general you know there's so many interesting podcasts these days true uh, a lot yeah a lot so i, I just go and uh, listen to those you know like i left egypt 10 plus years mm. and the only book i remember that i read when i was back in egypt mm. is the secret Oh, you yeah, did. Yeah, oh, wow. Absolutely. That's okay. why when you said like, said, Oof. Yeah. it changed a lot of me. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Even sometimes people say it's a very light book. It has mm. no, it has meaning. Yeah. But it for really... entrepreneurs, they would love to read the book, The Steve Jobs. Absolutely. That's yeah, an interesting there, yeah. book. So if you're looking to read something nice. But I believe in that. energy and I believe the, fo- the power of focus. I, when yeah. you have focus on yeah, something, yeah. your whole subconscious, conscious mind work to get it. So the secret is, I would say it's a must read book. Do you believe in manifestation? Absolutely. Okay. I do. I love imagination. I love visualization. And, and did you ever visualize that you'll be sitting here? I visualize a bigger scale of it. Okay. And so I think wow. that's on a way of uh, on the way of getting there. Wow. But I believe in that so much. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you have uh, tell yeah. me? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Tell no, me. I'm saying the visual imagination is really an eye opener, right? Do you, do you believe in vision boards? Yes, I do. You do, huh? Yeah. Because I'm an extreme I believer keep, in this. Uh, I keep doing them. Mm-hmm. I keep changing. Yeah. I keep doing No them. problem at all. Yeah. True. Yeah, I do that. But it helps. You know, it takes putting your goals to another level. Yes, I can have goals. I can write goals on paper. But what I love about it is mm. it just looks so pretty. Yeah, true. <laughs> and when it, it happens... It's like a perfect life, right? And absolutely. When, and when you see slowly some things are happening, you're like, okay, you know, it's working. But I believe a lot in writing mm. uh, my uh, manifestation or uh, writing short-term goals. Mm. I never do long-term goals. True. I don't know. I'm mm. not a big believer of long-term goals because I, I believe change. in, yeah, things change mm. your, you know, like you change cities, True. you change, uh, people around you change, 100%. everything changes. Right. So I love sh- writing short-term goals, but writing, them. writing. So it's a very important and a good trick, uh, in the morning or before going to bed, write down your next three months goals. Mm-hmm. It could be just five pointers. Mm-hmm. And keep doing it every day. It might be, you know, when you write the next day, you will think of something else mm-hmm. and the third day, something else. And you will have a book where you've written so many goals for sure. those three months. Mm-hmm. And you'll see, oh my God, this is really happening. And I have actually looked back and I've seen so many of that has happened. Mm-hmm. And my goals are very simple, short term. But I see that uh, writing is a very, very efficient way to do it. You know, there's one, one more thing which I love to achieve your goals. Mm. You need to win. Yes. And a lot of people that I meet, they put their wins or they put the level of their win is very high. Mm. When I accumulate wins, mm. my confidence increase. So mm. when my confidence increase, I achieve more. Mm. So for example, me having an interview with you today, I consider it a win mm. and going further and further and further, I just keep collecting wins every day. Like my day is full, just I'm collecting wins, wins, wins. It yes. goes to, which is helps you to achieve your goals. Absolutely. So you do think as well. In- yeah. I mean, uh, like you said, these small steps mm-hmm. are adding to your goals, but just one thing which I would like to highlight mm-hmm. is don't get upset if after three months, those are not happening. True. Because mm-hmm. It, sometimes things it happen. can happen. Yeah, things don't move the way you want it to. So don't get upset, but continue it still. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I remember I was writing, 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 and nothing was happening for I think six months. Nothing happened, and then suddenly, boom. Things so, change. You know, True. but I didn't give up. You didn't, didn't lose the yeah, motivation I, to continue. Correct, and mm-hmm. it was just a. I honestly, I was not even thinking it will happen, not happen. I was very neutral, but what I was liking was that. You know, that bit of writing, mm-hmm. I was feeling good about it. And, that, you know, that's the energy space. Yes. And when you're in that energy space, you attract things and manifest automatically. Things. True. Right. And I think energy plays a very important role. If today I'm sitting with you and I'm in a very low mode, bad energy, whatever, you're not going to enjoy talking mm-hmm. to me. True. You're going to be okay. Fine, Dipti, we are done. Done. Right. <laughs> but if the energy connects, 
then you're like you're finding it interesting we have a long talk we discuss about other things so i think it's a lot to do with how you cleanse your energy true and, and the vibes that you're space, giving yeah mm-hmm. and be in that space so writing manifesting uh you know manifestation listening to nice things mm-hmm. i think this all contributes your energy more or less in a nice way so it means that you have habits and routines every day yes I, which, I think, which habits and routines do you have which so, contributed to your success so okay. like of course the yeah, things sh- that you think you can't live without sure so journaling is one thing mm-hmm. which i do mm-hmm. uh, i love to do journal when i say journal i'm mostly writing short-term goals mm-hmm. and also some important incidents or mm-hmm. reflections from my day uh this is something that i've been doing i've been practicing uh yoga regularly mm-hmm. if not every day at least i try to do four to five times a week mm-hmm. at least uh if i miss out on my yoga i go for other workout i do pilates i do uh you know i just go to the gym i'll mm-hmm. do cardio but i maintain a routine of working out working out yeah so i don't give up on that mm-hmm. um then i would say uh, lastly the important thing is how you set your daily routine mm-hmm. when i say set your daily routine set your priorities either a night before or early morning and then just live with it mm-hmm. of course things can move up and down some things will drop out uh things will have to go to the next day True. don't it smash can yourself happen. True. yeah it can happen but at least start with the list so that you know that okay this is what i have to achieve today and maybe if you go halfway through i It's i'm fine. happy mm-hmm. you know i'm happy with that It's so fine. i think these are the things that i do regularly okay before we end yes. or finish today's episode we have a ritual um a tradition that we have okay. is that every alpha sitting here mm-hmm. he has to do three things in okay. what we call the alpha talks memoir Okay. okay. This is like a journal. All right. Kind of. Okay. And the alpha has to do th- three things. Mm-hmm. The first one is to write about the experience that he had in the alpha talks. Sure. The second is um, who you recommend to be the next guest. Okay. That you think he will make or she makes an impact and sure. support the alpha community. Sure. The third is write a question. Okay. To the next alpha interesting guest and this is we do it in a way that we make the alphas connect though they do know so they don't know each other so what's the question for me exactly that's the thing <laughs> so the question yeah from the previous alpha is here what inspires you in your life nature nature yeah i i think uh that connect with nature keeps me going mm-hmm. uh it inspires me every day to to, uh, to do things differently in a beautiful calmer nicer way mm-hmm. um it raises a question every time that nature is offering so much for all of us mm-hmm. what is it that i can offer mm-hmm. interesting so, way of thinking nice mm-hmm. yeah Love that. so uh, if you ask me just one word i would say nature mm-hmm. definitely that mm-hmm. really inspires me every minute so you mean you like to be outdoors more yeah i mean when i when i say nature it means uh, from rivers to mountains uh, to everything outside mm-hmm. yeah it really uh, it really gives me an amazing energy mm-hmm. uh, which keeps me going mm-hmm. I we can't be just like I said I can't be just sitting in a room mm-hmm. and thinking something out of the box. True. I need to be out there. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you Deepthi. It's been a pleasure having Thank you today. Thank you. It has been my pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did actually. Absolutely. It was lovely to connect. Thank you very much. Thank- That wraps another inspiring episode of today's show. I hope that this episode has ignited your inner alpha and left you feeling inspired. motivated and ready to conquer any challenge that comes your way remember alphas aren't born they're made it isn't about dominating others it's about embracing your authenticity leading with integrity and making a positive impact on the world if you enjoyed today's episode be sure to subscribe to the alpha talks on your favorite podcast platform leave us a review and share the podcast with your fellow alphas also connect with us on social media at safer hakim share your thoughts insight and stories of personal and business growth with us. Let's create a movement of alphas supporting one another. The world needs more alphas like you exactly. Until next time, stay bold, stay driven, and stay alpha.